Hello, this is Clint. I got a request from someone from Syracuse working on an exploded axon, um, maybe for a structures class or something like that. So just going into more of the tectonic uh, views and details. So um, what we're going to be doing is something more along these lines where it's actually exploded, uh, exploded into the parts and then these actually have uh, the make 2d over the top as you can see um, which is the line weights so we are going to be using rhino to do this and if you work in sketchup you can export that into rhino so you can more easily um, get the rendering so um, we're going to be using v-ray as, as well if you want the colors in the material map so um, you can do it just with the line weight and it'll look fine um, but I always use a rendering over the top of that so um, and here's another example um, this one right here um, of just the exploded tectonic view so I have this project open in Rhino and we well, first I'll show you, you can actually get an isonometric view, or the, the axon, but I guess the, an iso is not exactly 45-45 angle, but um, an axon does mean that, and Rhino cannot automatically do that for you. You kind of have to set it up yourself and kind of measure your screen, which is kind of messy sometimes, but if that's uh, what you're going for, um, the 45-45, and that's kind of the best way to do it. So the command to get the ISO, ISO is literally just typing in ISO, and it'll um, come up with isonometric, or isometric, sorry. And then you see it has northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. And then if you don't really know which one you want, you just press enter, and it'll, um, well, it should have gone into that view. So, I guess you do have to choose one. So let's just type in NE for Northeast and see it. It zooms us out. And now we're in isonometric view. So it's kind of hard to tell with this project since it's so angular, but um, every side is true. There is no perspective here. Um, so I show you in other tutorials how to make a a texture map and apply that and I've done that with the with this project as well um, so you can watch that if you want to know how to do that but um, this is what mine looks like for now so but I will show you how to set up the background though real quick um, that's over here in your VRA options I know my icons are really tiny but it's the yellow tag with the zero or the O on it. Um, go to environment and on the reflection, click on this white or that should be a black square for you. Click on that and make it white. And then you can also change your output size to um, whatever you need it to be for this tutorial. Make it pretty small, just so it doesn't take so long to render. Um, and then if you're working with any kind of lights, to make it look pretty clean. I never turn the physical camera on or add any other lights. Um, but you can watch other tutorials for that as well on lighting. So just kind of get it where you want um, to see the most. Um, sometimes a reverse axon like underneath is the best way to go to for your project. Um, but for this we'll kind of just go right here is, is good enough. So I'll go ahead and render this for you. And then while that's going, we'll do the make 2D for this as well. So select everything, type in the command make 2D. And then if you want hidden lines in the back, it'll put it on a different layer for you. So you can dash them or whatever you want to make it uh, more like this one. Fade them out a little bit but we won't add those. So, current view, 
and then it'll throw it in throw it in the plan so go over to the top view see that I've already made a few that's what those white lines are are the hidden lines and the black lines are the not hidden lines so what you do is export this and I'll just throw it in my desktop for now and the best way to save these are as an AutoCAD drawing so um, DXF is what I usually do so I'll just save that there um, 2004 lines and then we can go ahead and save our rendering as well save image desktop and you can open that up in Photoshop if you want kind of lighten things up um, but for now it looks fine so we'll just go straight into Illustrator which is how I get all my my line work um, and a good way to make things look like they're connected is to um, kind of put dashed lines to show where they will go um, I'm not sure if I yeah I have on these bolts and um, these brackets here that that's where they eventually will go kind of like they're moving a little bit I don't have any here actually um, so let's go ahead and open up our drawing um, it's just scale to fit doesn't matter and then it should be white so select it and then you can turn it to black lines and what I do is just uh, well we can actually just put our, our rendering in here as well so go over to your layers and then you should have two I think it puts ISO curves on here sometimes and ISO curves are just um, the lines that make up the surface which sometimes make it a little more messy so we're gonna go ahead and delete that layer just clean it up a little bit add another layer and put it underneath and this is going to be for our rendering and so obviously you want the lines on top so the rendering doesn't cover them up so now we're going to place file place our rendering and then drag it down to the bottom and so in illustrator if you um, select what you want it has this dot, this colored dot over here on the side, and you just drag that down to change the layer of something. And we're just going to lock our line layer for now and change the size of this. And obviously, the, the rendering is pretty terrible quality because it was very quick, but for the purpose of this, it's fine. So go ahead and grab your lines and now we're just going to line up the make 2d with the rendering so a quick way to do this is to get the outermost extent of your lines to match the rendering right here on one side so just drag that one's pretty close already so just drag the other side now to meet the other end so it should be that right there and then just drag it up or down a little bit big okay so that looks fine and what I'll do in Photoshop as well is kind of fade out these edges so it is perfectly white um, by the time it gets to the outer perimeter so you get things like this where the shadow fades off into your board um, or you can even erase the rendering slightly so that the um, the line work kind of fades fades it out for you kind of a good way to end the rendering um, so now what I would do is just kind of go through and change all the line weights so it's not so dark um, like obviously I wouldn't want these 
this corrugated metal to be the same line weight as um, just like a beam or something like that because they're not as important so I would I would turn those way down and then um, turn up the the beam or something like that so um, just things like that kind of tedious work but um, it's always good to add a new layer though if you're um, adding a new line what I like to do is um, to call out a certain thing so like this concrete pad here I'll add a new line around it that's a lot thicker so it stands out a little bit more and then you can turn that up or down or you can select all of these lines at the same time and turn down the uh, opacity of it and so they're they're kind of see-through now and then your your outlines kind of stand out more um, and then I also um, like I said earlier to get the the dashed lines to kind of connect um, where it's going to be eventually so just get your line tool out and so I'm not can't exactly remember what all connects to where it's been a while since I worked on this but I think that this this right here should be about right there whenever it's done so you can kind of continue that out so that's where it would be on the other side so let's make that like 0.3 and then go up here to stroke check dashed and then you can change the size of that dash by typing in um, like a 5.5 five dash and gap um, I always try to make them equal though um, five in one box and five in the other box um, just because it looks more consistent with the, the dash and the gap so you can kind of play around with whatever looks best for your project so just kind of adding those lines but everything should be pretty straight though um, because this is an ISO so nothing should um, warp back it should have zero perspective that you created the ISO so you can um, these lines would be straight down instead of slightly angled like you would in a perspective or something like that um, yeah so that's that's pretty much it um, hope I'm covering everything let me know if I'm not um, always looking forward to doing other tutorials or um, helping you with um, specific questions so um, let me know if there's anything else that you want to learn um, follow me on Instagram and send me a message and uh, or look on my website so thanks a lot for watching